In this lesson, I'll show you how to find the distance between skew lines. The question reads, the lines L1 and L2 with the parametric equations shown underneath are skew lines. Find the shortest distance between them. Before we begin doing this, remember what skew lines are. They are lines in 3D space and these lines do not intersect and they are not parallel. Therefore, they do not lie in the same plane. So with that said, to do this problem, we have to go back to what we did in one of our previous videos where we found the distance between two parallel planes, the same sort of idea, concept, and formula. The steps to doing this are outlined below. And in step A, we have to identify the direction vector and a point along each line by analyzing their parametric equations. So take a look at the first row. Those are the parametric equations for one line in 3D space. And we have to identify its direction vector, I'll call that dv for short, and a point along that line. To find the direction vector, we look at the coefficient of the scalar factor t in our case here. So the coefficient here is 1. Therefore, the direction vector, which I'll call a, has an x component of 1, a y component of 3, and a z component of negative 1. And once again, I took 1, 3, and negative 1. The direction vector for this, we'll call it b, that is 2, 1, and 4. Remember, before we continue, that every line in 3D space is defined by a point plus a scalar quantity times a direction vector. The direction vector is parallel to the direction of the line. To find a point along each line, take a look at what x, y, and z actually mean. They tell us the x, y, and z coordinate of a point. So if we know t, we can actually find the x, y, and z coordinates of a point along the line. We can set t is equal to 0 and that will give us a point. So if I set this equal to 0, that one and that one, I'll end up with a point, let's call it point 0 at 1, negative 2, and 4. And similarly if I set s equal to 0 here, I'll end up with a point at 0, 3, and negative 3. So that takes care of step A. And now there's a reason why we're doing all this. Let's move on to B. Create an equation for a plane using the cross product of the direction vectors. So remember, these are our direction vectors, and I'm going to take the cross product of these two. Remember what happens when you take the cross product of any two vectors. You end up with a third vector that is at right angle to both of those vectors. So once we take the cross product and find that vector, we'll actually use that cross product vector as the normal of a plane that we're creating. And there's a relationship between the normal and an equation of a plane. That's explained here, where once we find the cross product vector, the x, y, and z components labeled a, b, and c will serve as the coefficients of the equation of that plane that we're creating. So let's break this down. We'll start by finding the cross product of a and b. So the cross product is written like this. It's a vector, and to find it, we use a little mnemonic, a little trick, where we write down 1, 3, negative 1, 1, 3, negative 1, twice, and the same thing for the one underneath, 2, 1, 4, 2, 1, 4, 3 times 4 is 12, just follow this pattern, minus the product of these two, that's negative 1, so 12 plus 1 gives us 13, that's the x component of the cross product, negative 1 times 2, that's equal to negative 2, minus 4, that's negative 6, and 1 times 1 minus 6, that's negative 5. So this right here is the cross product of those two, and it will actually serve as the normal to this plane that we're creating. And because it serves as the normal to that plane that we're creating, we can actually substitute 13, negative 6, and negative 5 into this formula to create an equation. So we have 13 bracket x minus, and for x sub 0, y sub 0, and z sub 0, we can actually use any one of these points that we like. Let's choose this one. In the end, it doesn't matter. So if we choose this one, I'll put 1 here, plus b is negative 6, and we have y minus negative 2, that makes it positive 2, 
minus 5, z minus 4. And that is equal to 0. Let's expand this and get a constant out of it. So we have 13x minus 13 minus 6y minus 12 minus z plus 20 is equal to 0. Collecting like terms, minus 13 minus 12, that's minus 25, plus 20 is minus 5. So 13x minus 6y minus 5z minus 5 is equal to 0. Now that we've created this equation, we can move on to the last step, which tells us to use a point found along the other line. So we already used the point here. We'll use this time this point to find the distance between this plane and that point. That's done using this formula. So let's go ahead and use it. We have the distance is equal to A, B, C, and D represents A, B, C, and D of our equation multiply to the point that hasn't been used yet, 0, 3, negative 3. So we have the absolute of 13 times 0 plus negative 6 times positive 3 plus negative 5 times negative 3 minus 5 divided by the magnitude of the normal vector of this equation, which is 3, negative 6, and negative 5. So 13 squared minus 6 squared plus negative 5 squared. Taking the square root of all of that, let's use our calculator. We're finding the absolute of this number, so if it's negative, make sure that it's positive. The first term goes to 0, the next term is negative 18 plus 15 minus 5 gives us negative 8. The absolute of that is 8 divided by the square root of 13 to the power of 2 plus 36 plus 25 gives us a distance of these two skew lines of 0 0.527, 0 0.53 units. And there you have it. That is how to find the distance between skew lines.